Hi, I'm Jeff Birch and this is the Mammoth Tech Show. So what exactly is the difference between an iPod and an MP3 player? This might sound like a slightly odd question, especially if you know the answer, but I've been asked it more than a few times. And when you think about it, what is the difference between an iPod and an MP3 player? OK, I can hear the more cynical in the audience say nothing except the iPod costs twice as much. And in a sense, you're correct. We have a few MP3 players and iPods here. Here we have a little Nano. And here we have a little copy of a Nano. A uh, couple of generations difference. But basically, they've got the same things. They've got screens, controllers, a little socket for your headphones, a battery inside, and a little doohickey inside that converts MP3 code into stuff that we can all hum along to. So what is the difference? So how do you get your music onto them? Well in the case of generic vanilla MP3 players, you get your computer, you get a USB cable, you connect them together. And then your little MP3 player appears as an external device like a little external hard disk. And as far as the computer is concerned, it basically is a tiny little external hard disk. You then take your music files, drag them from your computer, pop them onto your MP3 player, disconnect, and there you go. You have music on your MP3 player. But what about iPods? Well, for one thing, you'll need a special cable because this isn't a standard USB socket. Then you connect them together. Then the differences start. For one thing, this won't appear as a little external hard disk. Your computer won't really recognize it at all. You'll need a special bit of software to get your iPod to talk to your computer. And that's iTunes. And that's really the difference between an MP3 player and an iPod. OK, we download iTunes onto the computer. So now we can just copy files across onto our iPod. Unfortunately not. If you want to get your, your music from iTunes onto your iPod, you have to work the iTunes way. Basically, if you want to get your music onto your iPod, you have to use what are called playlists. And they are, as they sound, a list of things that are going to be played. Say you want to have an album across onto your iPod. You'd select Create Playlist, and then select the album title for the album you want to transfer across. Then, once you plug your iPod in, go into the settings on your iPod and select that playlist. And once the iPod is synced, that is, the information on the iPod is synchronized with the information on iTunes, then that information will get transferred across. Now, that sounds a little complicated, but it does have its advantages. For example, if you were to use, instead of an album title, the artist's name, then all the music from that artist will get copied across from all the albums that you have of that artist, including compilations. So you don't have to go hunting through, now that that's what I call music, etc, etc, just to find the number of tunes that you want from a particular artist iTunes will do it for you and copy it all across. You get a new album, if it's from that same artist, that playlist will get automatically updated and then the new album and the new tunes will be added to the playlist 
so next time you sync your iPod, that new music will be updated automatically and you won't have to do a thing. So basically, it's a difference in philosophy. With an ordinary MP3 pair, you have complete control. You control each folder and file as it gets transferred from your computer onto it. But your fingers may slip, files may disappear between the cracks in folders and end up who knows where. You may damage or delete the original files, but you are in control. With the iPod, it's automated. Things happen automatically. With podcasts, for example, if you have a particular favourite podcast, your iPod can be set to upload those iPod uh, those podcasts onto it automatically whenever new episodes are downloaded. You simply insert the iPod into its dock or its little cable and iTunes will automatically fire up. The new episodes of the podcast will be automatically synchronised across onto it. And this will all happen without you having to touch a thing. So whether you'll get on with an iPod kind of depends on the type of person you are. If you need complete control, then iPhones may be not for you, iTunes may frustrate you, or you may not think it's worth the effort to initially put in to actually get the automated stuff working in the first place. But with iTunes, if you put a little bit of work in, if you work out your playlists, if you think about what you want to do with it, then it can be a very powerful tool and you'll be able to do things quickly and simply with an iPod that you simply can't do quickly or simply with an ordinary MP3 player. Don't forget the Mammoth Tech Show now has a Facebook page. So go on to Facebook, do a search for the Mammoth Tech Show and don't forget to hit that like button. We of course have our ordinary web page at all the W's mammothtechshow.com where previous episodes can be viewed. And if you want to see them in glorious high definition, check out our YouTube channel. This has been the Mammoth Tech Show. I've been Jeff Birch and you've been very kind to watch. Thank you very much. Oh.